Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning and welcome back to Hope Faith in Our Hometown. Uh, this morning, my guest is Nancy Hudson, who is with Life of Hope Ministries, and uh, Nancy's going to be telling us a little bit about that this morning. One of the things that we've discovered in our explorations as we've been looking at different things happening in the Joplin area, especially uh, in, in terms of where it connects faith with the world, uh, has been that we've got a, several kind of almost homegrown ministries here. And uh, Life of Hope Ministries is kind of one of those things. And so Nancy is here to talk to us this morning about what they do, how they got started, and how things continue to evolve uh, in what has become for them uh, a, a completely different way of life from what they were involved in before they got involved in doing this. Uh, I want to take a moment to stop and thank Mercy Hospital Joplin for their sponsorship of Faith in Our Hometown, and we'll be right back uh, after this short break. Thanks for joining You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN-TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. So welcome back. Uh, again, my guest this morning is Nancy Hudson of uh, Life of Hope Ministries. Uh, Nancy, you know, um, I, when I hear uh, stories uh, about you, um, a professional businesswoman here in the area for many years, uh, you know, in kind of a, you know, a, a fun business, you know, and those kinds of things. And then uh, it seemingly God kind of tapped you on the shoulder and made you change directions. So you want to talk a little bit about all that? Sure. I, you know, a lot of times people, when they see me, still believe that I'm I'm um, the Harley lady. I'm the lady <laughs> that, that runs the Harley Davidson dealership. And um, I did that for many years. My husband and I own Cycle Connection Harley Davidson. And that was what I thought I would do until the day I died, retired, or whatever. And that whatever <laughs> seemed to happen when God gave um, my husband and I a nudge and said that it was time for us to sell our business. And that was the least likely thing that I ever thought would happen in my world. And uh, Scott and I both realized it was time, not knowing what we were gonna do, and, but at peace with it. We became, I wasn't at peace to begin with, <laughs> but became at peace with that. And after we sold the dealership in January of 2013, still we were very unsure as to exactly what it was we were supposed to do as our path went forward. Um, I loved what I did. I loved being a businesswoman. I, I loved our customers. I loved the community. Um, but I knew there was something else. And so for that first year, I wasn't exactly sure, but one of the first things that, I, that we did was uh, we were asked by a gentleman that worked for Life of Hope Ministries to go on a mission trip to Guatemala. And I thought that um, every good Christian should go on a mission trip, right? And so it at was- At least a, once. At least sure. once. And so I thought we were doing it to check it off of our bucket list. And uh, little did I know exactly how God was preparing me to take me into what I'm doing next. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, sometimes I'm fond of saying God writes straight with crooked lines. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you think you've got something figured out or you think you know what you're going to do and then all of a sudden you realize that the whole time you were being led mm -hmm. around something else to land you where you've landed now. It very much is that, yeah. Yeah, so talk a little bit about Life of Hope Ministries. So what did you discover? I mean, this wasn't just a that mission trip. Now it, it's become it your full-time gig, has. if you will. It's so. become the passion of my heart, yeah. and it's exactly where I was supposed to land and exactly what I was supposed to do. Life of Hope Ministries actually started 12 years ago um, this month, this okay. month here in June. So 12 years ago, Life of Hope started with one guy who believed in children in Guatemala who needed to help, who needed to be rescued, who needed to see the hope that Jesus gave to, to them in Guatemala City. And how, how did he wind up in Guatemala? How, how did that happen? He actually worked for another ministry mm -hmm. who had done a lot of work in Mexico and they had some cro crossovers with some people who were working in Guatemala. God led him to that as well, just like he led me to be where I'm at. Sure. And so um, he started it with people, the, the board of directors actually telling him, you shouldn't do this. this. This may not go where we're supposed to go. But it was exactly what we're supposed to do. And he started developing partnerships in Guatemala that Life of Hope Ministries could then 
um, walk alongside with them and work along with them and be able to support them in their work and what they do in their culture. So okay. he started that many, many years ago and it was a very worthy cause. So he was, when he got down there, I guess he was disturbed by what he saw in terms of some of the hopelessness of the lives of the kids that he was encountering? There were, and much like even here in the States, I right. mean, this is anywhere we go, um, if, if the children don't have hope, there's no way to get out of that generational bond, that generational sin or generational poverty. Uh, it, you've got to have some kind of a hope, somewhere to go. And he saw that, and he was able to share that with a couple of other guys. And that's when they said, you know, I think we can make a difference. And to begin with, and it still could be, um, I think our mission statement, in fact, I know our mission statement on our website says um, rescuing children in Latin America. But so far, God has just cornered that Guatemala area for us, and that's what we serve with. Sure. So. So he found kids that were basically in uh, you know, the barrios and things like that, that that didn't have any hope. They just, that was it. That was right. they, all their life was going to be. And he figured out a way of saying, hey, we might be able to help you so that you could have mm -hmm. a different kind of life. It so is. give me some concrete stories or examples well, of those absolutely. things. absolutely. And I'll tell you my first trip. Let uh -huh. me just tell sure. you about my first trip. When I first went to Guatemala, it was the first two, three days, probably the first two days, I looked around me and I saw so much poverty. And we work in the city and we work in the landfill. It's the largest landfill in Central America. It's 27 football fields big. And there are about 10,000 people that, that live in the landfill. We also work in the largest slum in Central America. And so when I first looked around me, I saw poverty and I saw children who, um, by my human standards, had no hope, had absolutely no way to think that they could ever survive that world. About the third day, maybe, what I saw was much bigger than that. And what I saw was, is the hope of Jesus is real for them. The hope of Jesus is something that is, is able to, to touch. Because I think in the United States, we become very distracted. We have so many other things that interfere with our time for Jesus or for anything else that we do in service or community. And Jesus is their hope. And all of a sudden I realized these children had beautiful smiling faces because mm -hmm. they believed Jesus was their savior and believed that the hope comes from only Jesus because they didn't have anything else. So all of a sudden what I thought was a sadness and oh, my heart is just broke became a reality of what Jesus and who he really is. And that's the hope that we all have right. in Christ. And so all of a sudden I realized that you can't, you can't fix the whole landfill all in one day. Right. You can't fix every child. You can't rescue them all at one time. That it's breathing into them one at a time with programs that we have and able to be able to continue to be able to give them that hope. Right. And when you encountered some of those little ones who somehow, you know, even though you couldn't change the world, you were able to at least change that child for that moment mm -hmm. in, on that day, started to kind of bubble up some of these other feelings inside it is. of you. Yeah. And I, I, when I was a little girl, I, I said that I would never be a missionary. <laughs> I said that that was one thing I would never do because I thought missionaries were boring. Um, how could you ever do that? And all of a sudden I realized the importance it's what we do here at home, and it's also where we, what we can do in another culture. Whether we go there, not everybody's supposed to go to another country. Um, but you can pray for them, or you can support them in some way. So I all of a sudden realized that my job, instead of owning a Harley Davidson dealership and thinking that that was everything that I was, it's so not about that. It's so much more about what God has for us to be able to do to further his message, to be able to show one child, two child, children, um, hundreds of children, the ability that they have to be able to grow up strong in God and that they can make a difference in their life and they can make a difference in their neighborhoods no matter what the, what the difference. Now, I want to follow up with that a little bit because you know, it's so interesting. Sometimes people think that the only way to make that difference is to, you know, quit their job or you know go do that mm -hmm. mission trip in a mm -hmm. different spot. Not everyone's called to not do that. Not everybody is. Some folks just would not be able to find that life-giving. They would they would mm -hmm. struggle with that mm -hmm. for whatever reason. That's exactly and right. And let's also face the fact that because you were a good businesswoman and you did what you were able to do in that regard, you were able to get yourself set up in so many ways mm -hmm. to be able to now, I mean, you were learning other skills about relating Absolutely. to people. You were learning how to build relationships in the community. Mm -hmm. You knew all those things because mm -hmm. God was giving you the other work to do first. Mm -hmm. 
that have now kind of set you up to do what you're doing now. That's exactly right. So, I mean, you know, I always, I always, you know, when people, and I don't think you were drawing the line there, but so many, so many people get this whole line here that says, well, this is what's sacred and this is the profane, mm -hmm. you know, this is the secular world. And I'm like, no, the whole thing is to see the sacred, you know, woven throughout the secular mm -hmm. world because mm -hmm. that's where God intertwines with it. That's exactly right. I have said ever since the whole um, selling the business thing happened, that God prepares us today for what's coming tomorrow. And that's exactly what he did with my life. That's exactly what he did with Devin, our director now's position, our, our director that started the ministry, retired. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's what he's done for all of us. All of us that have are involved and have been involved with Life of Hope Ministries had other careers, had other things that we were focused on and think you were gonna do. Um, but it's God's calling and he prepares you to do what it is you're about to set out to do. Yeah. So. I, uh, one of my friends uh, works, and we're actually taking our youth group from St. Peter's down to the River Valley to work with refugees, mm -hmm. okay, so people who are seeking asylum here in the United States. Right. I used to take a college group down there every year for like the 10 years before I came to Joplin 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And every time I'd be down there, one of my friends was, one of the, was the director at that point in time, and now she's kind of semi-retired, but still one of the directors. And every time I'm down there and I'm working with the refugees and I'm working with her and just doing this simple day-to-day hands-on stuff with this refugee or this refugee or this refugee, I, I, there's something inside of me that goes, I wish I could quit everything else I was doing and just come here and do that. Mm -hmm. And every time she says to me, no, your job is to bring these groups of your students down here so that they can see the plight of refugees mm -hmm. around the world and their job then is to go back and to tell those stories at your university or for these students to come back and to tell them at their high schools and to do those kinds of things so that we can continue to again spread the word and in some ways change the culture right you know rather right. than just going and doing one-on-one -on -one because not everybody can go into do the other ministry or do it the other way That's right. so it's like every time i go down there i mean you know, i you know I, I i feel that pull to go do something mm -hmm. and then she's like no you stay doing what you're doing because you need to be doing what sure. you where else would we you know what if you weren't doing what you were doing then how would we do this and i'd be like oh i hate arguing with a sister <laughs> you know she always just you know she always you know sure. kind of puts me right back where i belong and snaps me back into mm -hmm. reality well and part of what i do um, with life of hope ministries is take groups down to guatemala mm -hmm. and so part of my job is to take groups and expose them to the work that's being done and let them be relational yeah. with what they do and building those relationships is important not just with mm -hmm. your not with not just with the people you serve in guatemala but let's face it there's a lot of people right here mm -hmm. who you formed relationships with who now because they might not be able to go to guatemala mm -hmm. but they might be able to help support some of the work that you're doing in Guatemala right. by writing a check or um, you know sponsoring somebody else to go on a mission trip right. or to do those kinds of things. Right. Right. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about some of those opportunities mm -hmm. uh, here in the second half uh, of the program this morning. Uh, but for right now, again, this is Nancy Hudson, who is uh, works with Life of Hope Ministries, which is an outreach uh, to Guatemala and to some of the the children of Guatemala mm -hmm. who might not have had any hope if it were not for Life of Hope. So. Uh, we are going to come right back after this break, and uh, we hope you'll stay tuned. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN-TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Welcome back. Again, I'm here with Nancy Hudson with Life of Hope Ministries. And so, Nancy, our viewers are sitting there wondering right now, so what does Life of Hope Ministries do? So how do you do this hope thing? How do you give these kids this hope? Sure. So how do you do all that? Well, you know, we have five partners in Guatemala that we work with. And our job is not to go in and save the day for them. It's to go in and work alongside of them. And so what we do is we fund programs in Guatemala that does basically five things. Um, one is we have a medical clinic that sits at the gates of the landfill, so we provide medical care for the individuals there in the landfill as well as the slum areas. 
Um, the clinic is something that we support. Medical care is very, very important. It's free to them. Um, there, there's a lot of illness and a variety of things, as you can imagine, living in circumstances like mm -hmm. that. So the medical side of things is very, very important. The other side is education for children, making sure that they have the opportunity for education because one of the things that we hear about the Guatemalan government, which is very corrupt, is that the education is free and it is so not free. And so we take care of making sure that those children have an opportunity to have that education. They go to school a half a day. So the other half of the day, we have community centers that we fund that are community center academies that help those children focus on their homework and to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. <laughs> because given a half a day off, they're not gonna be doing that. Mm -hmm. And most of their parents are not necessarily there. Well, um, right, and, and so many. So if, they need direction. Yeah. Well, and if if they did not focus on some of those things, they'd be out trying to figure out how to make money, how to That's find exactly it, right. how to do all those other things. And and really, part of that hope business is trying to get mm -hmm. them to see the next the next step in that whole thing, which mm -hmm. is education. It is. So the education is very important. Another very important element of what we do is feeding. Um, most of these families do not they scavenge in the landfill for their food. Right. And so they don't get nutritious food. And so it, the nutrition is very important for the child to make sure that they are healthy, but to make sure that they can be in school and make sure they do have that opportunity not to have malnourishment or have diseases and a variety of things. So feeding is a very important part of that as well. We also do construction projects where we go in and, and make sure that they're accommodated with their families, whether it be a a concrete floor instead of living and sleeping on a dirt floor or bunk beds to be able to have something to give them to sleep, that, that kind of thing. Um, and then of course number five is probably the one thing that all the others stem to because all of those other things are service. You have medical, you have education, you have feeding, you have providing them a, a roof over their head. All of that is exactly what Jesus did. He served mm -hmm. and he provided for the needs and when you provide for the needs then you get the opportunity to do the number five thing, which is show them Jesus sure. and the evangelism. So all of those things are geared for that. And a lot of these kids, I mean, the, the, the drugs, the violence, um, the community is ridden with those problems. It's sure. terrible. Um, some of those kids have a dad, may never see the dad. They may have a mom and a dad, but those parents work in the landfill every day. They go to the landfill and scavenge for something to generate about a dollar and a quarter a day for them to provide for their families. So those children don't always have direction from a family if they have both parents. So our partners work to make sure that they're taught things, even as simple as honesty, integrity, respect, things that are cleanliness, brushing your teeth, things that, that we've probably been raised to know um, right. in some sense of, of, of life. Um, our partners work with that as well because the parents can be a little absent. And I've seen and been able to pray with a lot of kids for a lot of concerns in their life and um, there's some pretty dismal things that happen there that they look to Jesus for that hope. Oh yeah. So. And again, you know, somebody said, well, you know, um, is, you know, is the, is the sharing Jesus part, you know, is that really us? And I said, you were sharing Jesus even with the other parts. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's kind of hard to preach to somebody about Jesus when they're hungry, mm -hmm. their bellies are rumbling, or yes. you know when they don't have their basic needs of the day met. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of hard to share. Uh, but when somebody's actually saying, you know, well, why are you doing all this? Mm -hmm. And you can say, well, basically because of my relationship with this person, Jesus, mm -hmm. and he's the one that kind of said, you know, share this or figure out how to sure. do so these uh, as I did, now you go do. Mm -hmm. You know, which is kind well, of an important piece. There have piece. been people in my life that have shared Jesus throughout my life and it's been by, by loving me or helping me be um, a better person in some sense. And so, you know, that's exactly what we're doing there and for these children um, and being able to give them that hope, being able to give them that, that perspective that there's going to be more. And even for these children, I, so many times we get asked when we go and present to different groups and organizations is, you know, well, what are some of the success stories? I mean, what does that look like? What, what is it that you're doing? How does that really matter? Well, for these children, um, learning English even as a second language is a way for them to get out of the mm -hmm. landfill to be able to work in a call center, which I have a whole different perspective on call centers now. Sure. Guatemala is known for some of the largest call centers in the world. And if one of our kiddos can learn English as a second, la second language and be able to go work at a call center, 
that child will make enough money to be able to support a family. And so now when I get on the phone and I get somebody that I don't think speaks my language good enough, I have a different look at that. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're doing something that can make their life better. And so um, it's changed my perspective in a lot of ways on what we have here in this country versus there. But at the same time, it all still boils down to um, helping others, doing what Jesus did as an example in, in the Bible and, and what we're supposed to carry out as Christians. Yeah, and I mean, you know, in the you know, sometimes I, you know, some people say things like, well, why, you know, why are you doing that somewhere else? You can do that same thing here in the United sure. States, which is true. Mm -hmm. And we can, and we should, and we are, okay? Mm -hmm. Bottom line is we can, we should, and we are. That's right. Um, but um, just for whatever reason, this is where the Lord led you. Mm -hmm. We're all supposed to do different things, and we all have different gifts. And I, if I've been told once or asked once or twice or a hundred times, well, you can do things in this country, exactly what you just said. God's asked me to do this. And so I still focus my energies here when I'm here, and I still work for him when I'm in Guatemala. So the, the, it all boils down to doing what God wants us to do and needs mm -hmm. us to do wherever we are, wherever right. we're called for. And that we are never going to run out of stuff to do. We are not ever going to run yeah, out of exactly. stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm never worried about job security. That's exactly There's right. There's always going to be something to do. Mm -hmm. So how would someone help a life of hope? I mean, how would you well, how, would, how would you ask folks to do that? If, they're, if, they're, if they've heard something this morning that makes them excited about maybe partnering with you or even sending a donation, how do they do all that? Well, I mean, we have a website, lifeofhope.org. It's very easy to find us. You can Google us. It'll come up. Um, but we have like a, we have a child sponsorship program where $30 a month sponsors a child. Those are children I see every time I'm there. These are children I, I interact with every, every time I'm there. And so that $30 provides those things we talked about. It provides the medical care. It provides the feeding. It provides the education. It'll provide construction and things for their families, um, a variety of things, plus seeing Jesus. So there's always the child sponsorship program. We have groups that contact us about what can we do to go with you to Guatemala. I can answer those questions as well. You can make a donation on our website. Um, all of those funds will go to help exactly the things that I just talked to you about and working with the partners in Guatemala. Um, I come and speak to organizations and groups all the time to share more information about what we do. Um, those are probably the basic things. And of course, you know, we always love for people to pray for us and be able to, to pray for, because there is violence, there are some dangers, there's things. Allow us to be able to be used when we go to Guatemala to glorify God in everything that we do and being able to do it well. So those are probably the basics of being able to, to help with Life of Hope. And one of the things that when I first went on the trip after I had been a businesswoman in the Harley world for many years, I was very um, moved by what Life of Hope did because of them being um, relational. And what they told me they did was exactly what they did. And I think that said a lot for me, having seen so many different charities and organizations throughout my time in the business world. Um, Life of Hope was real, and I love that fact that they, they were doing exactly what they said. And you know, that's a powerful message all in itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that, um I think that that's one of the things that, that many people, I think we've got many pe generous people here in the mm -hmm. Joplin area. I mean, I, that's always been my experience. If you take a concrete need to people, most of the time people will respond. Mm -hmm. But I do think people in Joplin are also very pragmatic mm -hmm. and they also want to make sure, okay, but I want to know that my money's mm -hmm. being spent for, you know, something that I really think is worthwhile and I want to, I want to have a guarantee that it's mm -hmm. not being eaten up in, uh, you know, administrative costs mm -hmm. or advertising or any of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And they really want to know that their money they is do. being spent for those kids rather than, okay, I'm going to write you a $30 check and $2 will go to the kids and $28 is right. going to go to the commercials. Right, right. You know, so how to do some of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So you got, you got low overhead, you got mm -hmm. direct care, you got, you know, hands-on experience mm -hmm. in knowing where the delivery system is. Right. Those are some of the things that I always look for when I'm looking for you know, what charities I'm going to support with my extra income in terms of doing those things too. Right. That was important for me as a volunteer. So it's always something I want to be honest and true to representing Life of Hope Ministries as sure. well. So. Now, are you guys connected with any particular church or is this just all a... We're not. We, in fact, we have churches um, that sponsor us and, and donate and support us from all over the U.S. 
Um, we just spent a few weeks ago some time with a, a church in Florida that supports us. We have teams that come from Florida. We have teams from all over. But we're still, I always say, our international headquarters, all two of us, is right here in Joplin, <laughs> Missouri, and has always been um, right here in this area. And so we have churches that support us everywhere. So we're not affiliated with a specific, mm -hmm. we're a 501c3 that is organized to do the mission of, of rescuing street children and at-risk kids. Yeah. So that's that's where it, it boils down to. Yeah. So. so if anybody wants to contact you, lifeofhopeministries.org or lifeofhope.org. Lifeofhope.org, lifeofhope okay. lifeofhope they, 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 we're on Facebook, they can find okay. us on Facebook. Good. Um, so that's a great way to reach out to us as well. Well, in terms of those things, uh, so uh, is, uh, this is, something you're doing, so you and your husband are doing? My husband actually, um, give is, a shout he's, out here. he's a volunteer. I'm, I'm the one that actually does this for a full-time job. He okay. takes care of another business that we okay. own. All right. So um, he, but he gets to go with me a couple of times a year. Good. And we both have the passion. We both went initially on those first trips and um, we sponsor a few kids ourselves. And so we keep very, um, in tune with everything together. So. Well, I from again through my contacts in you know South Texas and across the border, uh, again watching some of those kids in some of the rural colonias and things grow up, supporting those things. Mm -hmm. It's always so gratifying to see the same kids, mm -hmm. and you and you watch them grow up, and you finally watch them graduate from you know grade school and then secondaria. Mm -hmm. uh, you know and you watch them be able to do those things, and you mm -hmm. see, you know. That wasn't a great sacrifice on my part, but look at what a difference it made right. in this particular child's life. Mm -hmm. Look at what a particular difference it made mm -hmm. here for this one. So again, Life of Hope Ministries. Uh, Nancy Hudson has been our guest this morning. Um, we are going to take a quick break, and then I'll be back here in just a few moments to wrap up. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN-TV. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Our guest this morning again was Nancy Hudson uh, from Life of Hope Ministries. One of the realities that we've discovered is all these kind of homegrown ministries, if you will, that have taken off from the Joplin area. And I think it's part of what makes Joplin so unique to me. So there's so many people out in our community who, who somehow God has tapped on the shoulder or given a little nudge to that somewhere along the way, God leads them to start doing something that they would have not normally done or not normally thought of, but suddenly it starts growing. Life of Hope Ministries is one of those uh, where some Folks from here in the Joplin area somehow wandered to Guatemala and began to make a difference in the lives of some of the children uh, of the most needy areas uh, in some of those uh, local barrios. Um, there are lots of different ways that we can make differences. Uh, again, not everyone called to do it in a foreign country. Some of us called to do it right here. But I hope that all of us are at all times trying to seek out and try to figure out where it is that we might be able to make a difference in the life of some other people. Thanks for joining us this week. This is Faith in Our Hometown. God bless. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. here on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.